Look at that. That is a pie ball. Holy smokes. You gotta see when we're at Sam's house. You know, these animals have survived mass extinctions, ice ages, but now the biggest challenge they're facing is the human. And that time has been extremely stressful on many different species. The only reason I know about all this is because I love reptiles. Hey, what's going on everyone? Kenan here, and today we're uh, talking about a couple of different species. We're gonna talk about the Burmese black mountain tortoise, and of course, uh, a lizard as well, because you, you might guess from the pens. You may guess where we are. There he is. It's Sam, we're at Florida Iguana and Tortoise oh, Breeders. Folks. What's going on, man? I uh, Sam has been very great to me over the course of our friendship. You guys remember Cersei that we recently got? That's an Aldabra tortoise. And as a way of thanking him for giving me such a beautiful animal, uh, I was given a small black mountain tortoise, not quite this large. Uh, and since Sam has a nice little group going, I thought, why not bring this animal someplace where it has more of its own kind with a knowledgeable keeper and he can raise that animal up. Plus, many years ago, our buddy Ty, uh, Park gave Sophia, what did he give you? Exactly, which is why we are now giving it to Sam because Sophia kinda has lost interest a little bit in Leon, the banana pectinata. So today we're gonna learn about two different species of animals. That's what we're doing right now. Now Sam, yes, talk sir. to us buddy. What's going on with your, uh, these, are, these are a great species. I oh, actually used to keep them. Yeah, did you? I did. I had some they adults. They for you? You raised they them? They did lay. I hatched out one, but I wasn't very successful. And there's another gentleman in Florida, Vic Morgan. Yeah, he's the master. He is definitely the master. Big shout out to, to Vic Morgan. Yes. Thanks for everything. All the information, Vic. You're, you're great. Yeah. They, you know, these are truly an ancient yes. uh, species of yes. tortoise. Tuatara, and alligators, big. black mountain tortoises. And the reason we say they're Most ancient. historic. They, exactly. It has to do, oh my God, they are so heavy. I don't think, I, they, these guys can get close to 100 pounds with full yeah, growth. Sure. They're actually considered, some Probably consider them, now. right, some consider them the fourth largest tortoise species. But why we were saying ancient is because of their, what's called morphology, how scientists look at how these guys are put together, their skulls are actually very, very ancient. Um, it has to do with some of the holes in their skulls. Uh, I don't know in particular exactly what it is. The, that makes the synapses, right? right. The, or it, it, the synapsid. Uh, there, there are holes in the skulls, or there are lack of holes. Yeah, it, some have one, some have two, some have three, and those different um, uh, branches relate to different types of animals. Like they talk about parareptiles, and you know where are tortoises? Are they parareptiles? There's always been a lot of arguments that it's in the parareptile group. Some people think it's in the in the reptile group. Some think they're related to um, birds and alligators. Ah. And some people don't think that they're related to birds and alligators. They think they're a separate line altogether. That's really so there's a little really cool. little different evolution in there. They came back from different um, heritage, different. Right. Yeah. That's really cool. Okay, see, so we're getting a little uh, paleo paleontology yeah, here. Yeah, there you go, a little bit. A little, a little morphology, yeah. which is really cool. We but all study it a little bit more and more. That's, that's what we do, right? That's it. Just get into we it. We nerd out, man. We yeah. love to know everything about these animals. Uh, as much as you can understand about them will mean that you can keep them right. healthier and happier. And these guys, well, where did you get them? How long have you had them? Or were these animals you recently acquired? I've, I've had them maybe about five years now. Okay. I had them a long time ago, a long time ago, just like you did. Okay. And you know that was probably I don't know 35 years ago. I I lost that animal, and and so what I did was I always wanted to get them. It's really a neat tortoise, being really prehistoric. One of the things I really like about them is they build a nest. It's the only tortoise that I know of that actually builds a nest to lay its eggs. And not only that, that egg is different than it is in other tortoises. It's a much thinner shelled egg. It's actually so soft, they're very easy to dent. That's right. You yes, know, I noticed it has a that. Different, and yeah. I never thought of it because so many times people are like, oh, what kind of shells a tortoise have? And you wouldn't be wrong in saying that 99% of the time, it's a porcelain type shell. Yeah, it's a hard. brittle shell. Right. But like Sam just said, the uh, Manoria, which is the genus, they're the only, they're them and the impressed tortoise right. are in Minoria. Uh, but the, these Minoria uh, Emmys ferai, ferai right. are, are um, the black mountain tortoise and uh, they've got a pliable shell, a more pliable right. shell the, egg. 
the egg is the pliable shell. Correct, yes. correct. Yeah, good. Very, I, it's very, good to specify. Very easy to, uh, to, to dent to them. Dent. Uh, and the other thing, um, and I, here's another funny thing. I, oh, by the way, this is Paul Kafaro. He's hanging out too. Hey, Paul is here. <laughs> you can see a whole tour video we on his channel. We need to film a whole tour together. No, 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 no. So, so Paul's soaking up some good, good information yeah, this too. Is, honestly, just being here and being a part of it's insane. Yeah. First yeah. of all, the knowledge that both Kenan and Sam have, amazing. Like, blows my mind. Um, and then when I surround myself with that, it's cool because I get to little. I try to learn as least as much as I can. Dude, I, I appreciate you. The being words here. are a little out of my vocabulary, That's but I, right. go, I go for it. We're right. geeking out, man. Yeah, but um, funny thing, you know, they build a nest, Sam. They also protect the nest. Yes. Which is pretty intense. Right. Yeah. And it's one of the few torches that will turn around and bite you. Did you know that? Oh, they, they'll they, try to bite you. So we I'm shouted. They try to bite you. They will bite you to protect themselves. Yes. You know, you only typically see that in in predators, but in in but with a black mountain tortoise, a couple of other tortoises too, and turtles especially, yes. because the turtle is yeah. a predator now. They'll actually go around and bite you, like the glops and the other. They won't bite you. You can get your fingers stuck in their mouth when you're trying to feed them, well, but they're not going to bite like, you. What what tortoise has the strength, the strongest um, bite? Tortoise, probably a large galop or yeah, aldabra. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's a galop. You see the galop's head and his mouth is much bigger. He has a lot more muscle and everything. They're more head. blocky. And the yeah, exactly. And the aldabra tortoises have that thinner head, yeah. you know. Yeah. So they they have a smaller head. So I'm, I'm sure it's the galop. I've That's seen awesome. them. I've seen them bite corn on the cob and just whack off the ends. Like yeah, on the that's cob. incredible, man. You know, I have seen uh, displays of nest protection in sulcata tortoises as well. Oh, have you? Uh, I have. I have a large, a couple females. Uh, they'll lay the egg, and if I come too soon, yeah, they, will, show me this. they will dig and ram me. Never bite me, but they will ram. These guys, we mentioned Vic Morgan earlier. Uh, he, I once stood inside of his pen many, many years ago, and he's got probably 30 adults. And he goes, you might want to watch out. That's a slow, methodical attack. And that's exactly what it was. They were just coming over to nail, uh, you know, my toes to be perfectly, as I was wearing sandals. Uh, but a great species, love high humidity, which we have no shortage of here in South Florida. It's about to storm on, as you can hear. We're about to get a lot of humidity. Yeah, we're about to get high humidity. These guys really love that humidity. Uh, so Sam's setting up this run for the juvenile the that I brought him. And, uh, you know, pond in there. exactly. And yeah. he, they love to soak this species. These guys will sometimes eat uh, some animal matter, not all the time, but if they, I found that a lot of my tortoises, yes. if they come across they'll, a dead they'll bird, eat they'll eat it. Yeah. Protein is not to be wasted, especially yeah. in the wild. So if they come uh, come across something, they'll, they'll nibble on it. I would never it. ever thought yeah. more known that. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, even deer. People like deer as a herbivores. Well, guess what? There have been videos of deers eating little baby birds out of the nest. So it happens. Wow, yeah. Protein is protein, and if you can get a meal, uh, you gotta get it. Yeah, it's hard sure. out there for a tortoise, you know? <laughs> well, I don't know, they've done, they've done pretty good. Uh, 200 million years, That's the right. modern tortoise is still in existence, which always amazes me because if you think back 200 million years ago, that's what we call a tortoise today, a modern tortoise, has the ability to pull his head inside the shell, has the ability to pull his legs inside the shell, and has a top and a bottom shell, and he can pull his head in and he has a beak, not teeth. And that's the definition of our modern tortoise. That's 200 million years ago when you go back. That's now, crazy. you go back 210, 220 million years ago, and you'll see partial tortoises, the evolution leading up to a tortoise. Right. Some don't have a plastron. Some had uh, teeth. Right. They don't have a beak. Some had a, a large barb on the tail that they would defend themselves with. So, go back 200 million years, and, and guess what happened 66 million years ago? Asteroid. Mass extinction. Yep. Those, you gotta realize, these tortoises are survivors they're survivors of the mass extinction that wiped out 75% of the animals. So they're incredible animals. They can go for a year without eating, without food or water, and they're so tough, it's really what drove them to extinction because the maritimers, the, the, the sailors that went around we the world. We should walk and show sure. the tortoises you're talking about also. Yeah. I mean, we're talking collectively about all of them, but you're, you're hitting it right. Um, when you start talking about the, you know, the sailors and uh, tortoises that are born for survival, uh, it's always important. You you got to see when we're at Sam's house. We got to say, say hello to Adolf over here, um, and of course he is a Galapagos tortoise. But yeah, you know these animals have survived mass extinctions, ice ages. But now the biggest challenge they're facing is the human. The what are they? The the there's a term that we use for it. Um, I forget. There's the Pliocene. The, we're in the 
the Holocene, and then there's the anthro Anthropomorphocene, I don't know, the time of humans. And that time has been extremely stressful on many different species, and certainly tortoises, because these are animals that are creatures of habit. Yes. If you alter their environment, environment, it's just, it's no good. They do not respond to change quickly, yes. as you can imagine. But, but tortoises are pretty good because that's one of the reasons that they've survived when a lot of other animals haven't survived, because they have adaptive abilities. They're so tough. You know, you think about the story about the Aldabra that was on, uh, that was on uh, uh, Madagascar. Got too close to the surf, got carried away in the ocean. Six months later, lands up on the coast of India, covered with barnacles. It lived out on the ocean six months with its head above water, like this. Bobbing around. No food, no water, out of its own environment. And no other animal that I can think of can be out of its natural environment for six months, no food or no water, and survive. Yeah. But yet they do. And, and that's that's how they think those animals originally got yeah. to those islands. They were small animals that floated over to the Galapagos, and then the process that happened is called island gigantism. So because they don't have any natural predators, they, they just eat and grow and eat and grow. And that's what that's what happens over millions of years with wow. these tortoises. That's the reason they've, they've gotten so big. You know, you know, it's kind of interesting you talk about island gigantism because we noticed that it happens mostly in um, reptiles. Reptiles get larger. Yeah. Komodo dragon, largest lizard on earth, right. largest tortoise on earth, the Galapagos and Aldabra. But when you get a mammal right. on yeah, the an opposite. island, the opposite happens. Pygmy rhinos. Pygmy elephants, right. um, they get they small. Like island dwarfism. Yeah, the hobbit, uh, Homo floriensis, uh, the hobbit people right. uh, who, are, who are found in the fossil record on floors. These are people that were literally hobbit-sized, four foot tall right. human beings, right. a human ancestor right. that only went extinct about 10,000 years ago. So it's really, really interesting. And what's cool about Sam talking about this, um, the, reason I, the only reason I know about all this is because I love reptiles. Yeah. And so what I always say, reptiles are, for me, have been a gateway animal Absolutely. into biology. For into, me, everything. Yes, because you got to learn what they eat. You So you become a right. botanist. You got to learn other animals right. in their habitat. It's so cool for to me, watch the web. it goes back further. I tell the story. I don't remember how old I was. I think I was eight or seven. I went, my mom, parents took me to a zoo. I don't remember if it was a real tortoise or a fake tortoise, okay. but I was there and I was impressed. I had that hook, you know, where you yeah. just can't stop thinking about it. So I remember going through school and telling the kids at school and everything, someday I'm going to get a giant tortoise. I was just infatuated with them, you know? I think you might have succeeded, my and, friend. And they, they would say to me, oh, you can't get giant tortoises. They're, they're very expensive. So then I said, I just have to figure out a way to make a lot of money then, you know? <laughs> and then further on, they said, ah, you, you can't get a giant tortoise because only zoos can have them. And then I said to myself, I got to figure out a way to get a zoo. That's but it. it motivated me through my life, you know, to make money, to study, to work hard and everything. Because you, you, there's a goal. You have that impression. You have that love, that passion. Right. You give somebody that passion and it's, it's really amazing. I've seen it when I have kids that have come through here, little kids. Yeah. And today they've gone on. Some of them are doctors. Some of them are, are, are working the zoos. Some are working for you. Some, some are, some are going to be working for me, like Sophia over there. She's yeah. in hog heaven. It's amazing to yeah. see those people flourish because of something that happened in their childhood right. in some way. And you do a lot of education, and that's what you do. You have so many people that must have come back to you and said, hey, I started watching Ken, and I hear it all the time, that oh, people awesome. followed you along, and, and that's the reason they're doing the things that they're doing. There's, there's no better accolade than that than to have shared that information and stimulated all kinds of folks to be involved and take an interest in, in what's around us in the world. It's a lot of fun, man. And, yeah. and you're an educator as well because he does do tours here. You can find him, of course, online, Florida Iguana uh, and Tortoise Breeders. Breeders yes. But before we, we run off, Let's go look at some banana pectinata. Right. Um, because Leon Looks was like all alone. Just give my yeah, brother sure. a shout out. Oh, shout your brother out. I think it would be great for you too, Paul. My brother is Palm Beach Museum of Natural History, and he's up there in the mall. 
in that Palm Beach Mall. Oh, wow. And he shows him going out and digging the bones out in Wyoming. He's got some dinosaurs there up in that mall and everything. It would be a great place to go. Yeah, we we're going to have to go visit yeah. that, guys. Yeah, That'd be really cool. Go. That's really yeah. cool. He's got a museum there, and, you know, uh, he, he does, he's a, a paleontologist, and, you know, and I'm, I'm doing, I'm working with live animals. There you go. <laughs> it's, it's so neat. You know, we've done some videos in between. If you get That's a chance, cool. check him out. Palm Beach Museum 100%. of Natural History. PB and Palm Beach. That's awesome. That is so runs cool. In the family. .org. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what the bananas are. Okay, so we're happy because after you, Sam, we're happy. Uh, we're happy because um, Leon was all alone, and I think Leon should have some females, uh, and I think that's going to be the best thing going. You know. So right now, the the animals I brought him are in quarantine. Sam likes to do a quarantine on all new animals, um, but they will soon live in the lizard greenhouse. Wow. Oh yeah, cool. Nice large enclosure. Definitely like ours. Yeah, definitely bigger than ours. Mario, where's that big pick in here, right? Yeah, taking care. Awesome, man. This is so cool. I'm gonna grab, take him out. Yeah. So let's have a look. So these are Centinosaur. Right. The Central American species of yeah. spiny tail iguana. Mexican spiny tail iguana. Okay. You know, when they're cousins and related to all of those other species that, uh, you know, the pied, uh, you ever just, you've seen some yes, I have. pied, sure. Yeah. That's a beaut, but that is a gorgeous animal. Look at that, Soph. Holy smokes, what do you think? Whoa, that's a real this banana. Is a male. Yeah, it is. Holy smokes, he's gorgeous. That is he's going awesome. to a shed right now. Yep, I love that. That's beautiful, guys. Look at him. Wow. So there it is, Centinosaur. Where are these guys? Are these found in uh, Mexico or further south? No, no, Mexico. They are Mexican. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty neat, man. So there, there's different uh, subspecies of spiny tail iguanas. There's Simulus pectinata. I'm not 100% sure. You may be right. I'm not 100% sure, but um, I know that they're subspecific. Sub yeah. Yeah, so this is like a, a uh, this is a naturally occurring morph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a banana, but right. well, the banana is the part that we call when they're high yellow. Right. Okay. Right. Because it's Tinosaur pectinata. Okay. But there is no Tinosaur pectinata banana. Right. That we just call right. it. It's a morph. That's exactly. really what the banana it's a, it's is. It's a morph. Cow. Right. Very cool. That's awesome, man. And then here, here they're a little bit younger. Here they're only about two years old. Look at that shot. You can see they don't quite have the yellow. Okay, so the, this yellow comes out. This As is the smaller older. ones. I'm gonna get in here and get a shot. That looks like a female. I could be wrong. I don't know. Man, it's a female. Yep. Look at that, guys. And these guys bred for us this year. They did? Yeah. We bred a lot this year. That's awesome, man. We, we, we bred bananas, pines, bakerai, conspicuosa. Wow. Holy smokes. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, These are pet, all pet for, types. I mean, we've got, we, we raised uh, ivory, black mountain tortoise. That's incredible. Yeah. Man. You're doing take great. A look at, take a look at this over here. All right. If you insist. <laughs> Whoa. Look at that. That is a pie ball. Holy smokes. That's gorgeous. Yeah, isn't he? No. On the other side, we have high white. So we have two different types of um, breeding groups. We have high white, okay. and we have high black. Okay. So a little bit different strokes Inverted, for different folks. Yeah. Yeah. Inverted a little. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome stuff, man. I just, like I said, I just wanted to, uh, you know, get those animals to sure. a place where no, they can really be reproduced. It. reproduced. So You're always there. Buddy. I appreciate it. Sam, thank All you. Right. Always All a pleasure. Right. Guys, care, folks. don't forget to go check out his Instagram. You can find him. Florida Iguana and Tortoise, Tortoise Breeders. Breeders. See? Right on YouTube or FloridaIguana.com on my website. All right. Appreciate it, folks. All right. That's a wrap. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>